Let's begin by setting up our project. We'll go to File, New, and click Select and choose the Lores model. For this example, we'll work with a 4K document resolution and leave the rest to default, but you can change the settings based on your preferences. We can see that the two subtools we had previously in ZBrush are separated into two texture sets. Next, we'll turn off the texture set for the non-exploded model and select the one for the exploded model. Then, under the texture set settings, click the Bake Mesh Maps button. Select None and then check on the normal checkbox. Under the common parameters, set the output size to 4K and adjust the dilation width as you prefer. Next, load your high-res models. Next, check on the use cage and load your cage file. Set the anti-aliasing to 2x2 or higher and leave the rest to default. Lastly, click the bottom right button to bake the maps for only this texture set. This will take a bit of time, so I'll pause the recording and get back when it's done. Ok, the process is about to finish, so let's give it a few more seconds. Great, let's click OK and see what we have. All our details are baked nicely, however we do have a few artifacts as we expected, especially on topology that is pushed inwards. This one looks great. We also have some minor projection errors and a few artifacts on inside corners. However, the rest of our details are nice and clean though. Ok, let's continue checking our models and take notes of pieces that need to be fixed. We have a few more artifacts here as well. This one looks great. And this one looks nice and clean as well. It has some artifacts though at the back inside corners that we'll need to fix. Ok, let's have another look at our bake on our non-exploded model. So make it visible and hide the exploded model and then select the non-exploded model and connect the bake map. We can now see exactly what artifacts are visible and need to be fixed and also get an idea of how the final look of our model will be. Now that we know what needs to be fixed, we'll show you how you can very easily tackle these issues using either method 2 or method 5 of the DRS Tools plugin. So let's jump back into ZBrush. The first thing that we need to do is to turn off all the subtools and then turn on all the cages. We can either use the visible if cage or visible by name button and type the word cage. Next, select any of the subtools that had artifacts and make visible its high resolution model. Hide its current cage and make visible its empty align subtool and select it. Next, zoom a bit close to the subtool and open method 2 and method 5 under the cage tab. 
For this subtool, we are only interested in making better inside corners, so method 5 will work great. So let's click the Create Cage Adjust Radius button. Click OK on the pop-up and type in a value. Because 5 is a small value, when the process is done, you may see a few high-res details not being covered by the cage created. But since we are only interested in capturing better corners, we can safely move on to the next subtool. Before we continue, we need to make sure to hide the empty line and hide the subtools before selecting the next subtool. Then simply repeat the process. For this subtool, we are going to use method 2 as we also want to bake the details that are very close to the inside corner edges. So click the Create Cage Adjust Radius button and type in a value. We'll use 10 for this subtool to cover all the highest details. Very nice. So let's continue and repeat the same process for the next subtool. We'll use method 5 and type in a value of 5 again. Now if I zoom in a bit, you can see that the value of 5 was not enough to create a cage that covers the subtool. So we need to delete this cage. Then make sure to select the empty align subtool and create a cage using a higher value. Let's try a value of 10 again. You can also check if your cage covers your subtool correctly using the transparency button. OK, let's move on to the next subtool. I'll use method 5 and a value of 5 again. Perfect. Hide the high res and empty align subtools. And let's find the next subtool. Now, for this subtool, we'll need to create two cages using method 2 and method 5. This is because we need to fix some projection errors on our details and the artifacts on the inside corners. Let's start with method 2 and a value of 10. We can see that not all the details have been covered by the cage, but the area that has the artifact is, and this should be enough to fix our issue. So let's continue. Alternatively, you can create a new cage using a higher value. Now let's make the second cage for this subtool using method 5. And let's try a value of something like 7. OK, let's have a look. It looks good, so let's continue. Just to keep things organized, I'll bring this cage below the one we created earlier and rename it to distinguish them. Then I'll hide this cage and I'll hide the previous one and also hide the empty align and hide the subtools. 
Then I'll scroll back at the top, making sure I didn't forget any HRS or MT line subtools visible. And finally, select any of the cages. Next thing we need to do is export all our new cages. So let's open the FBX export import tab. And then scroll down to the merge tab and click Merge Visible. Now let's export our cages. Okay, now I'll select the original two and scroll down to the subtool that we created two cages for. Then hide the current cage and then hide the other one and repeat the process of merging and exporting our cages. Now we can jump back to Salsa Painter.